on time, so if you want to swap out, if you have questions for Daniel, you can just ask him right outside in the hallway. Otherwise, we'll get Raphael set up, and this will be the last session in this room for the day. Thanks, Daniel. Ooh. He did the stream yard stuff. Did you yes. do that already? Yes, okay, cool. What do you need? An adapter? Oh, you got that. Oh, can he borrow your adapter for the talk? Is that okay? Okay. Okay. Okay, cool. That's Daniel in case you don't okay. remember. Okay. Thank you. So. Okay, that's right. Um, it's like you're just at the end, just at the beginning. Yeah. yeah. You give a memento style talk, do your talk in reverse order. Let's see if it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Time travel speaking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I have a little green button usually. That should work, yeah. Awesome. Uh, I don't have one. Yeah, it'll be all right. It'll be. Okay. All right. Let's give it up for Raphael. Hello. Hello, folks. Do you hear me well? Yeah. Okay. So, everything okay there? All right. So, um, I will talk about performance. Uh, I mean, I love performance. I love. Uh, finding issues, finding very deeply issues, and in the end, I fix it, and then I break something else. That, that's my goal, okay? And finding performance issues is not easy. It, it normally requires uh, a lot of steps, a lot of workflows, and uh, you end up staring at the screen for a long time, and then you decide, okay, I walk with my dog because I don't have no idea about that. And well, that's why Clinic.js exists, okay? Clinic.js is a Node.js tool uh, uh, that you can use for um, diagnose and, uh, your, your Node.js application and see what's going on and perhaps finding the, the, the real problem and fix it, okay? So it tracks latency between operations. It contains a CPU profiling. It contains a memory profiling. It contains also uh, a way to measure a sync hooks, internal things from Node.js. And well, that's very good. So first of all, my name is Rafael Gonzaga. I'm from Brazil. I'm a staff engineer at Tenure Forum and um, Node.js, TSC member, core member of Fastify and maintainer of Clink.js. So I'm a bit biased here. Uh, but if you like this kind of content, I, I'm trying to do live streams on Twitch, okay? Uh, it's not natural nowadays. It's very difficult to keep the audience, you know? But I will keep doing that, okay? Uh, so let's imagine you have an OGS application with thousands of lines of code, and um, after one or two weeks uh, of monitoring, you see that the performance decreases for some reason. And well, the obvious path is okay. I will go to the to the to the Git history, and then I will fix it. Uh, I will look to the who did the the bad commit. I will revert it, but Normally, this is not a good approach because performance does not appear in a single commit. It's up in several of them. It's a sequence of commits, okay? And uh, so how can developers find performance issues? That's why we use uh, Clink.js. But, well, one, of, uh, one approach you can follow is, okay, you can read all the code, all the thousand lines of code, and guess what's the problem. You can walk with your dog, as I said, you can talk with a rubber duck, or you can be a bit more practical and use building modules. Like you can require VH, you can uh, use uh, get active handles, dash dash prof, dash dash CPU prof, use Chrome Dev Tools. Uh, you can also use environment tools like eBPF, S Trace, uh, Linux Perf, but that's required time, okay? That, that's time consuming. And or you can just npm install clinic, okay? Um, it contains a, a quartet of tools, okay? Uh, I'm going to all those. So uh, let's imagine a HTTP server, uh, a Fastify one. So if you don't use Fastify, uh, please do. Um, basically, every request that I receive, I check if I have, uh, I have a data.txt, and then if I have, I will write, I will override the data 
with my, my latest request ID, okay? This is just to simulate a uh, synchronous operation. And then if you run it with clinic doctor, basically the command is pretty simple. You run clinic doctor, and then you pass uh, the load generator tool. I'm, I'm using AutoCanon, but you can use uh, Apache benchmark, you can use the Gmeter, it doesn't really matter. Uh, as long as you produce load. You can even uh, send a lot of curl requests, but I don't recommend. And, and then you pass the application, in my, in my case is node index.js, and it will generate the following uh, graph, okay? I have the CPU usage, memory usage, I have event loop delay, I have the active handles, uh, usually is the amount of uh, concurrent requests you, you, you send, and one of the things that the clinic doctor points to you is like a doctor, okay? It will see your problem and will point, okay, this is your problem and this is how you can fix it. I won't fix it for you, okay? Um, so it detected a potential event loop issue and one of the recommendations, if you click uh, on, on, on below, uh, is to either use Clinic Flame. Clinic Flame was created for CPU profiling, okay? or you use a the dash dash trace sync IO. If you use it, it's pretty simple, just trace trace sync IO, curl request, and then you get, get some warnings about, okay, don't use synchronous operations on Node.js, otherwise you block the event loop, pretty simple. If you don't want to use that flag, you can also use the clean flame. The command is the same, you just replace doctor by flame, okay? And it will generate the following flame graph. Who knows what is a flame graph? Raise the hand, please, okay. Flame graph is basically a way to visualize what's going on in your application. Basically, wire blocks means more time spent the CPU, and the, the y-axis you can read by code stack. So in that case, we have the parse on header complete that code uh, parse on incoming and so on. Okay, it's uh, it's easy and it's like different from flame chart. If you use Chrome Dev tools you see that I can profile in my application there, but you see things over time. And the flame graphs ab abstract the time for you, okay? So it's way easier to find a bottleneck. So as I said, if you want to take a picture of how to, to, to read a, a flame graph, it's your chance now, okay? Uh, it's very useful and I'm pretty sure in any language you can do that, okay? Generate a flame graph. Um, okay, in your case, we have generated the flame graph and then, as we can see here, the problem is in the CPU uh, line six. Line six is the or, or call of uh, exist sync and write sync. So, okay, obviously, as the trace sync IO the flag told you, this is the problem, okay? And if you want to go a bit deeper on that, I mean, I love it is uh, you can use the flag dash dash kernel dash tracing. It will retrieve all the CP, C++ symbols from V8 and Node.js using uh, Linux perf events. But you know, if you use Windows or Mac OS, I'm sorry, it doesn't work for you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it will generate the following semi uh, flame graph. Uh, I mean, it's pretty much the same one, but the difference, if you click on the block, you'll be able to see that it, it shows when a code is optimized or not. When a code is optimized, it means that it was compiled by the Turbo Fun from, from JavaScript. And when it's not compiled, it's interpreted, so it's, it will say here, non-optimized. It, but it, it's tricky because um, nowadays, V8 has three compilers. The interpreter, Spark plug, and Turbofan. Turbofan is the optimized one, but you can have an intermediary uh, compiler called uh, Spark plug that is also slow, not as slow as interpreter, but is slow. But this will help you. And also, if you click on V8 when you use kernel tracing, you'll be able to see this horrible thing here. Very hard to understand, but is uh, if you go deeper, it's about sys calls in your system. So you'll be able to see, okay, this is the the real problem. It's very hard to find it. Uh, I mean, in a real world application, uh, it won't help you a lot. But if you are debugging Node.js, this will help you. Uh, well, 
if you really want to, to use it in production, you'll be able to use using the following flags, collect only, because as you know, in the servers, if you want to do a SSH in the server, I don't recommend, but uh, you'll be able to collect data without the browser, and then you send the HTML file to your machine, and then you open it. It's easy, but it will drop your performance. I don't recommend it. So what about memory? Well, it's basically the same. Replace Flame by Hip Profiler, and then you get another profiling view. Uh, on near form, we have several workshops around clinic, and one of them is this exercise that I won't give you the solution. So if you want to try ClinkJS, really download this, this, uh, this fork, this project, and try to solve it. It's, it's easy, but it's tricky. Uh, basically, is an HTTP uh, server. Whenever I receive a request, it will load the template. The template calls the require name is a module, and this module basically return a random name. But there is a memory leak here, okay? Uh, and if you run it with the clinic heap profiler, it will generate the fo following flame graph, basically pointing to you. Okay, name is the function leaking memory, okay? Uh, it's important to say that it measures the amount of memory allocated by a function, not if that's leaking or not, okay? So if you want to see, okay, my, my Node.js app is consuming a lot of memory, if you use it, you'll see which function is using more memory in the stack, okay? And, well, there is another exercise. This is very interesting. Um, it's called, uh, it's a round off or... Um, workshop and basically we have this ugly code here and whenever I receive a request I will find in my MongoDB database uh, the newest, the five newest operations and then I will find the five oldest operations, uh, rec records actually. And well, if you do it and run uh, with doctor it will, it will tell you, okay, uh, doctor has found a potential I.O. issue. What does that mean? Normally, when you are profiling, no, when you are producing load to your application, the CPU shouldn't be below 100%, I would say. Why? Because you are producing load, you expect it to be on the top. If that's, if that's below, like, below 50%, it, it means that something is waiting until you complete, to, to, to conclude. So it means that your I.O. operation is, um, is, I don't know, killing the performance of your application. So for instance, let's say that I'm performing uh, HTTP call and I'm waiting for this HTTP call so I can continue my work. But that's not why Node.js was designed. As you have heard, Node.js is non-blocking operation, so you shouldn't block it, okay? That's the recommendation. So if you see the CPU usage on the top, uh, on, on uh, below, uh, actually uh, a small percentage, it means that you are doing something wrong. And the recommendation in that case is to use the bubble prof. Well, if you run it with bubble prof, it will generate some bubbles. And it's difficult to read, but we have a great documentation around that. Basically, each bubble means each um, asynchronous operation. No, not totally asynchronous, because as you can see on the top, just in that code, we had 2,000 uh, asynchronous calls. So uh, it's hard to debug, right? So we make it a bubble, so we can expand it and see what's going on. And if you look to this, and click in the, in the, in the first bubble, is basically our code to the object uh, index uh, .js in the line 11, and basically is our first call, right? Our first uh, MongoDB call. And then, if you open it and expand, we will see that there is another call in the index.js line uh, in, in the line correct for the uh, oldest path. And if, if I go below, uh, just a few slides ago, uh, before, you see that we have two bu uh, one bubble and the NPM ca carry, this one is, is executing, and then I call the second one. It means that I 
wait for something until I, I dispatch another one. So this is a problem, uh, at least what Bubble t tells you. And what you can do is, well, use the promise at all. Very simple. You perform two carries, not at the same moment, but it will, it will be dispatched. And uh, if you run it with a bubble, you'll see that there's only one bubble now. So uh, actually, there's two bubbles, but they are not dependent on each other. So we are good. Uh, well, happy debugging. Um, a few considerations before. I just don't know about my time. Do you know? OK. <laughs> Aries told me to run, but not this way. No, no, I mean, I mean, uh, just a few considerations is like um, promise.all is not always a good thing, OK? If you don't have limits, it will burn your application. Uh, I, I say that because I saw uh, Tinder for me perform a lot of consultants in big companies, and uh, it's bad. So, and yeah, that's it, guys. I, I won't tell, uh, I won't speak too much because we, I'm, I'm angry, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> now we have. Well, that's a good question. Um, there are two ways to, to... Nowadays, people find performance issues when this is a problem. That, that's, that's when you, you use it. But I normally go to the libraries I maintain and use, uh, use it regularly to see what's going on. But I do have monitoring set up, like, okay, this, P, P, this performance decreased or this app decreased the performance, so I will use the tool. I don't need to use it every single day. Yes. Uh, well, ClinicJS, yes, but it won't get you reliable results for benchmarks because it wraps your application. It means that you, it will drop the performance by almost 30%. Right. But if you have a benchmark, like yes, yes. Uh, by the way, I have a tool. I have, uh, in, if you go to my uh, GitHub, I have one project called uh, AutoBench. It's basically this. Uh, you send a pull request, this pull request will be integrated in a CI. We will benchmark it, see if the performance decreases, if there are performance regression or not. If there it, it exists, we will a request change and we'll say, okay, you are doing something wrong. Don't do that. Yeah. Oh, this project in specific is just comparing a request per second in the throughput of a HTTP application. Yeah. That's it. Any further question? Good? Okay.